everyone. Welcome to my wall. It's not gonna be like this for much longer. First of all, let me introduce you to my most regal headband. This is gonna be the theme for today. Does this look good? Is it giving Blair Waldorf or is it just giving Shein? Please don't say Shein. I will literally jump. Anyway, if you guys have been keeping up, you guys would know that I am working on a gigantic apartment makeover. We started from the raw materials of the building. We gutted everything, started from scratch. Once we finished, I moved in, got my furniture set up, everything, and I have finally been living in my apartment, which is so exciting. But I'm still continuing on with a bunch of different room makeovers and decor things and that's kind of what we're doing today as you see behind me we have a wall with wall moldings which I'm obsessed with this is going to be my TV wall but I don't want it to be just a regular TV I want it to be a cool TV in the spirit of wall moldings Louis the 6th 14th 5th 17th Louis the teenager Victorian era you know regalness don't come from my art history I have no effing clue what era I'm actually talking about but you know what I mean, the general gist. I wanna make my TV from that era. Now you're wondering, girl, this is the 21st century. How are you gonna make a flat screen TV look old? Vocabulary really is not popping off today. Some of you guys may have seen the Samsung, what is it called? That like flat Samsung TV that you can put a frame on that looks like art. I'm gonna try to mimic that, but I don't have the Samsung TV. I actually have the Amazon Fire TV that I unboxed in a previous video and it's so beautiful, but it's huge. I didn't realize that I got the 65 inch version and I'm gonna mount it onto the wall, but also make a little frame for it. Me and my dad are gonna figure it out. The best DIY duo in town let's go okay in order okay this headband has got to go no oh, no headbands okay now, in order to make it vintage style, Baroque, Victorian, we've already established, I don't know what the fuck era I'm talking about. I wanna make a frame for it, which should be interesting and fun, potentially. I always say that and then I end up in like the trenches. So we'll see. So the general plan is to mount the TV to the wall first and then need to pick up some wood for the frame and then paint it and stick it onto the frame. Sounds easy enough. We'll see in practice how it actually works but I'm excited to have a TV! Hey, girl's just been watching New Girl for the sixth time on her phone, which is not the vibe, so yeah! Part one, mounting the TV frame. In order to do that, I bought this TV wall mount and I attached it to the back of the TV, which was actually pretty easy. I just followed the instructions that came with the TV mount and this is probably the easiest part of the entire project, unfortunately. Okay, I think when you're placing the TV, you're supposed to put it like kind of eye line from where you're sitting. So that would be like here, but that would make the TV like really low and it would block off the bottom part of this wall molding which I don't want so I would prefer it to be like higher so it's kind of like in the middle of this frame so that you can actually see the wall molding there might be a little bit of like neck craning action but I got a TV mount that's tiltable so I don't think that's really an issue and also because you're like looking down at your phone not you me I'm looking down at my phone all day so it's kind of a nice change to like have my neck crane up actually also another issue though because we have these wall moldings we have to cut into the wall moldings to be able to mount the TV mount because it needs to be flat. So we're just gonna cut that off. But before that, I needed to figure out the placement of the TV and more specifically where to drill the TV mount holes in the wall. I used this template that came with the TV mount that shows all the different drilling configuration options. I made sure it was perfectly straight and centered on the wall and then I taped it to the wall and I started a drilling away and drilling and drilling some more. Guys, Tragedy has stricketh, struckith. Again, vocab is not a strong suit today. You know, why did I expect anything to go differently? Why did I expect things to go smoothly? I should have really seen this coming because when we were installing these wall moldings, we bumped into this issue already and I totally forgot about it. The fact that when we were trying to nail these in, a lot of the nails just would not go into the wall. So obviously this means that there's something behind the wall. And I know that it's not a stud because if it was a stud, the nail would still go in. So we drilled in a whole bunch of different locations using the template. They have a bunch of different 
different options with the TV mount to drill holes into for like different types of wall situations. Now, I just don't even think that there's a wood stud in here at all because it lights up right here. And then it also lights up right here. So we thought that there were like two studs like this, but no, I think that this entire thing is actually just a sheet of metal. When we drilled it in, we see the metal right there, which is not good. So you are supposed to mount a TV onto a stud because that's like basically the only way to ensure that's not going to fall off. However, we don't really have that option. The other option is to just put it on a TV stand, but I just don't really want to do that. I actually don't want to do that at all. I just think it would look so much better mounted to the wall. I've never had a TV mounted to the wall before and I just really, really want it. So I did some research and another solution is to use drywall anchors. Typically, the normal kinds that you use are just like plugged into the wall if you're hanging lighter things like picture frames or art or like shelving. But this is a whole ass TV, bro. This is like my body weight. So there are these anchors that basically go into the wall straight, but then once you pull it, it's like flat. So imagine this is the wall, right? The anchor goes in like this. And then once it's in the wall, it goes like this. So it's like pulling against the wall. Okay, I don't really know how to demonstrate this with my hands, but you know, this thing is like anchored to the wall, so it's not coming out. I have seen other people do this, and I'm just hoping that this is gonna work because it's our last resort. We drilled a couple of holes. We basically like went through all the options, and we finally found four holes that aligned that are hollow, which typically is not a good thing because you wanna find a stud, but we're actually trying to find the hollow places so we can put Put in the anchor. Does that make sense? I am not sure if any of this makes sense. Regardless, we have struck gold, but I'm not gonna speak too soon because we still have to install it. So let's see what happens. With the new plan in place and my confidence in the project at a solid 3.5 out of 10, I used a bigger drill bit to funnel out the four holes big enough to stuff the wall anchors into. Then we struggled big time to install the anchors properly. It broke one, had to go back to the store to buy another one. It was a whole thing but really like what do I expect at this point for my DIY projects? Eventually though, we got it down. So here's a more coherent overview. Essentially, I pushed the entire metal part of the anchor through into the hollow space of the wall. Then I pulled on the plastic parts till the metal piece was flat against the inside of the drywall. Then as I pulled on the long plastic parts of the anchor as hard as I could, I also pushed on the little stopper that kind of acts like a zip tie. Once all four anchors were in there tight, the easy part was just to snap off the excess. And finally, we have our anchors in the wall. I literally just noticed this as I was watching the footage over, but my dad actually removed the wall moldings in the place where we we're supposed to remove it for the wall mount. I didn't even notice it at the time. You know, I'm not even surprised at this point. My dad is the true MVP of this channel. Like he's running the show for real, for real. So shout out. Anyway, it was finally time to install the TV mount onto the wall. We just took these super long screws and screwed them into the wall anchors. I actually didn't film this part, but we ended up taking out the screws and adding washers to them because we were scared that the screws would rip through the metal of the TV wall mount. Like they weren't wide enough. So we added washers for more security. Okay, so the mount is now on the wall. Now we're doing the human trials before the non-human trials. I'm gonna like hang from this and see if it rips off. Cause if it rips off, the TV is definitely not gonna stay on. Yeah! Okay, I'm like pulling as hard as I can. Ah! It's pretty strong. Now for the moment of truth, part two, mounting the TV. Would our non-conventional spur of the moment alternate solution hold up? Or would the weight of our obstacles cause the TV to come crumbling down? Was that not like so Taylor Swift of me? Well, ta-da! It was a success! I needed this win so badly. Okay guys, here's the game plan now that the TV is on. Oh, by the way, look at what the TV looks like on the wall. Is that not insane? I'm still like, it's gonna fall. Well, see, I was gonna knock on wood, but there's literally no wood in this freaking wall. So, Anyway, the TV is on. That was the main obstacle. You know, we problem solved. I skipped over a lot of steps because I didn't want you guys to see the trouble that we had to go through to find holes that actually worked. Now the game plan is to build the frame. Essentially, I need to make a front facing frame and then a side frame so that the front facing frame is like decorative and it sticks onto the side frame. So it kind of will just like slide onto the TV so I can just like remove it at any time. That means that I need to get wood that's pretty lightweight because I don't want to add 
add any more weight to the wall. But yeah, I feel like it should be pretty easy, so. And these were words that she would soon come to regret saying. Anyway, part three, making the frame. Hello all, welcome back. Here's my little haul. For the front facing pieces, I got this type of molding. It looks like a picture frame. It's like wider on one side than the other. I was really deciding between this and something a little more ornate. I decided to go with this to be more safe and because it's easier to paint, honestly. So this is gonna be the front pieces that I have to cut into to fit on the front. And then for the side pieces, I just got these flat pieces of wood. It was like $100 for all of the wood which is not the cheapest, but it's also not the most, I mean, it's, it's, it's all for the aesthetic. Let's get to building the frame. One tiny small issue is that there is this sensor at the bottom that I have to cut out a slot for, or I just have to avoid it somehow. Um, so we'll just figure it out. This project was honestly so chaotic, so I don't even know what happened to this footage. But we started with the side part of the frame, and we cut the flat pieces of wood into four perimeter pieces. And to assemble the frame, we used these small nails in each corner. Not gonna lie, I struggled real hard. My dad could not stand the side of it, so we took over. Lol. Also, the footage is a little blurry here, but my mom was really trying her bestest. This was truly a family effort project, and uh, we really struggled the whole time. Anyway, I finally redeemed myself with one of the corners and successfully nailed the nail in. Not that there's any real clear footage of me doing it. Oh my god, I'm doing it. Why are you so surprised? Okay. Okay. And after that, we just fitted it onto the TV and thank God it fit. I actually think it didn't fit the first couple times and we had to redo it a couple times, but I didn't want to show you guys the agonizing process. Anyway, I just marked out where the notch for the sensor was and then it used a super safe and super stable setup to saw the wood off. Would not recommend trying this at home, kids. Now moving on to the front decorative part of the frame. I needed to measure the wood pieces so that they fully covered the existing black frame on the TV and also cut the pieces out a 45 degree angle. Luckily, these wood pieces were super easy to cut and they're like pretty thin, so I just used a handsaw for all of these pieces. After cutting out all the front pieces, I measured out where the center notch needed to be again on the bottom piece and cut it out again with my super safe setup with my jigsaw. Like, definitely would not recommend because so many accidents could have happened, but please just don't be stupid like me. Okay, I'm just a stupid little DIYer. I'm not a professional, so that's my safety warning. Now, finally, with all the pieces cut, it was time to assemble the frame. We used this No More Nails construction adhesive instead of nails because we ran out of nails. When I tell you this is one of the more chaotic and non-professional DIYs I've done, I am not lying. Like, I literally left the frame on the TV, squeezed the adhesive onto the wood while it was on the TV, and expected the glue not to transfer onto the TV. Really, truly, like, a brainless moment for me, for sure, for sure. Anyway, so we stuck the bottom piece on first and stuck a bunch of tape on it to hold it in place. It actually turned out pretty well for the process. Unfortunately, the other three pieces were so much more difficult to stick on and like get aligned. It literally took all four of us two hours to get these pieces on and like aligned without it falling off. I know for a fact there are more efficient ways to do this, but the brain power was really running on a low. You wanna try to push like what I can do is... I did not think this <laughs> Leave. Start reciting Chinese poems. <laughs> That's literally what I was thinking of. <laughs> please, please. Make I this swear, if this we doesn't need, work, I, I need this wind so bad right now. <laughs> I'm gonna scream if this doesn't work. Okay, we're on. We're on. I, I'm not. No. Wait, no, no. no I, yeah, I have top corner. Oh. Wait, it fits. Wait. Oh my god. 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 Was it worth five hours? <laughs> This part is not connected though, just so you know. Oh, like at all? Like the top is not connected to the wood. Like, do I really care? <laughs> 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 Who's gonna notice? Wait, wait, no, you know what? I should. I probably should. 
Now, at this point, I could literally cry a whole pool of happiness tears. Don't get me wrong, there were still so many, 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 many flaws, but I really did not even have the willpower to care <laughs> about the details anymore. So once the frame was completely dry, I moved on to the last step, which was painting it. I'm using this gold metallic paint to give it that antique look. I actually didn't expect the color to be so gold. I thought it might be a little more brassy, but that's really a problem for the future. Now, while I waited for the paint to dry, it was time to move on to part five, peeling off the plastic layer. And finally, it was time to see the frame on the TV. Dancing to your beat, on it blending, no self-expression cause I... As you can tell, I was very shocked this actually worked. Because with my luck, you never really know. But anyway, very, very, very happy with the result. And the last step was just to conceal the wires. So I stuck an extension outlet onto the wall behind the TV, tucked the wires in, and used cord covers for the wire that was running down the wall. And finally, the project was finished. So let's see the final result. so good. It literally look, just looks like a piece of art on the wall. Oh my god, I'm literally obsessed with this. I think the gold frame turned out so well. I'm in shock. I'm in shock. I just think it looks so amazing. I still feel like the TV is like gigantic, but I'm so happy with how it turned out. I think it looks so perfect with the aesthetic of the dining room. As you can see, it matches so well. I think this was the perfect piece to add to the living room because it is such a big TV. When it's off, I feel like it would just be too distracting and like would take away from the aesthetic. And this way, it just fits in so well. Anyway, this was such a fiasco and so much harder than I thought it was gonna be, but we made it there in the end. And let me know what your thoughts are. You guys should definitely try this out too. Thank you to all the parties involved in making this happen. Grateful. And um, more to come. Thank you so much for watching. You can check out my new song, How to Love, right here, or check out my entire condo makeover series from the start right here. Hey.